recently, I received a text message from my sprinkler system. <laughs> I repeat, from my home sprinkler system. Apparently, it had been in communication with the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration with regard to the weather forecast for an area around my home. This got me to thinking about artificial intelligence. For most of us, or many of us, the idea behind artificial intelligence was suggested to us by the 1968 film, 2001, A Space Odyssey. One of the characters was called Hal, and he was a super intelligent computer who was also in charge of the entire spacecraft, so everything was connected to him. So he was interacting with the crew through natural language processing. In 1968, we didn't have the technology to build anything that could do that, but the pieces are beginning to fall into place. Artificial intelligence can be defined as behavior from a machine, which from a human being would require intelligence. So what we're looking at is the process of training machines to behave in ways that appear intelligent to us. So there are three kinds of artificial intelligence we can talk about. The first is narrow intelligence, which is what we see now. Self-driving cars or the Siri interface on the uh, iPhone, the bits and pieces to build something like HAL is starting to appear in reality. The next step would be strong artificial intelligence. Strong AI is defined as a machine that is generally as intelligent as a human being. So not only could it drive your car, it could also make pancakes for you in the morning. It could also do your taxes. So a very general machine capable of doing a lot of different intelligent tasks for you. And lastly, there's super strong AI. Under super strong AI, we begin to see machines that are improving themselves that are redesigning their hardware and software and are beginning to present to you solutions to problems that you have never brought to the machine. So one of the things that occurred to me is that AI is no longer in the future. It's here. Much of the infrastructure that we need to build AI machines is starting to appear in our commercial applications, but specifically the internet. The internet is a global communications network that forms the fabric that underlies tying all of these machines together. The internet was designed by the Defense Department to be very robust so that you could attack bits and pieces of the internet, but you could never turn it off. The other side of that is the internet doesn't have an off switch. Now, if you watch as many science fiction movies as I do, you have reason for concern when you start creating intelligent machines that do not have an off switch. The latest thing that we've seen is the smartphone. This is a machine that didn't exist a few years ago. But now there are more than a billion people who are becoming dependent on their iPhone or their smartphone. Some people are never more than four feet away from their phone all day. So I'm thinking about what are the impacts of this? If we think about the economic impacts, they are worthy of thought and contemplation. If we think about the transportation industry, there are over three million people who work in the transportation industry in the United States alone. In less than 10 years, the insurance companies are going to realize that it is cheaper to insure a self-driving car than to insure a car that's driven by a human being. If we look further, we think not only is it going to be the, the blue-collar world, it's also going to impact the white-collar world. IBM already has a machine called Watson whose job is to read papers on cancer research. So it's looking at research papers globally in all sorts of different languages and it's used as a consultant. So a doctor will type in the, the uh, pr presentation of a patient's symptoms, and it will consult with them on the proper diagnosis and possible treatment plans. So Watson can give your doctor advice based on a paper published yesterday in Italian. No human being will ever be able to keep up with that type of system. And right now, that's still defined as a narrow an artificially intelligent system. So going from medical, it's even going to hit the uh, creative arena. We already have software that writes music, music that you've heard. If you listen to commercials and you listen to documentaries, very often some of that music has been written by machines. Recently, someone completed a motion picture and they decided to use an artificially intelligent machine to make the trailer for the movie. 
So they showed the machine 100 trailers from other movies, and then they showed the machine the entire motion picture, and it created the trailer that's currently running on TV and on the internet to advertise a movie called Morgan. So all aspects of our economy are going to be impacted. One of my concerns is that these systems do not fail gracefully. If we look at training versus coding, the old days in, you got in front of your machine and you typed in and you told the computer exactly what to do. Today you train your machine, meaning if you want to teach a machine to make pancakes, you let it watch 100 people make pancakes and it will figure out how to do that. The problem with training is that you're never quite sure what you've trained the machine to do. So even though it performs at 99.9% .9 accuracy, you never know when it's going to make a mistake and do something embarrassing or counterintuitive to your, to your intentions. So this creates the challenge of training. How do you train a machine to accurately do what you want and not do things you don't want? A few years ago, a Tesla Model S made a left turn through an 18-wheel truck. Uh, sadly, there was a fatality involved. The car mistook the side of the truck for the sky because at that moment in time, they happened to be the same color. So the problem I'm calling attention to is the fact that it's hard for an engineer to sit in his or her office and imagine all possible situations that would be clear to a human being, but very confusing to an artificial intelligence. So what can happen beyond that? We're thinking about a situation we called the singularity. The singularity will occur when we have an artificially intelligent machine that is producing improvements to itself that no human being knows about or understands. At that point, we become vulnerable. You can imagine there are going to be impacts, and one of them is actually very good. It's called utopia. Imagine a world where no human being ever has to do anything for work that they're not interested in. Imagine a world where technology and medical benefits accrue to you for free. The machines are doing it all. That's the utopia part. But now imagine a system failure. Let's imagine the power grid goes down, the traffic lights stop working, the telephone system stops working. If you imagine you've been in this utopian state for 25 years, there may not be a human being alive who has any idea why the power just went off. And that's a risk that we take as we move forward that I think we need to give some contemplation to. Artificial intelligence is going to redesign our world. It's going to have economic impacts and it's going to have effects on the human condition that we currently cannot predict. Did I mention there's no off switch? So I'm looking at, we as a society have to think about what safeguards do we need to put in place to make sure that this technology is tremendously beneficial to us without creating the risk that may be profoundly detrimental. It's my sprinkler system. <laughs> He's all excited, so I think I'm going to have to take this. Thank you for your attention.